So today, our objectives for today, at the end of this lesson, students should be able to um, identify Columbus three ships used on this voyage of discovery, um, identify and explain um, use of new technology or equipment used by Columbus during his voyage of discovery, um, examine challenges Columbus faced during his voyage, and also assess how Columbus dealt with the challenges that he faced. So these are our objectives for today. He used by Columbus to fail, okay? Um, one of the things that we talked about last class was that in order for Columbus' voyage of discovery to be possible, he used some new technology that was made available or that, that they started to use during this time to make longer voyages possible. We said last class that prior to the Renaissance era that lots of persons were afraid to take um, long journeys. And the reasons why the reason why they were afraid to take these long voyages of discovery um, was um, especially going in the western direction was, was because there was this fear, um, there was this hit belief that they would um, they were taught that first of all, most persons living during the time, they were of the view that the earth was flat and not round or spherical, as most geography teachers would tell you. And um, there was this uh, myth that if you ventured so far west, eventually you would fall off of the face of the earth and you would be devoured by some sea monsters, okay? Uh, however, during the Renaissance era, you had lots of persons who made um, several different um, um, technology or instruments that made Columbus Voyage of Discovery um, 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 possible. Sorry about that. Um, um, one of the first instruments that, um, that, was, that he used was, was a quadrant. A quadrant is used to determine the position of the ships on the Earth by how far the sun or the north star was above the horizon. Also, um, Columbus used an hourglass. Um, it just was um, used to log to determine um, speed. Also used a compass, used for direction, um, because Neil always pointed north. Also, he used a throwing lead used to measure the depth. Also used a, a throwing lead used to measure depth. Um, he used an astral used to determine latitude, and he used Latin sails, um, which move adjusted um, to different directions to catch the wind. Now, the, this is, is the technology used um, during Columbus, uh, Columbus's time. However, we, uh, you, we all know that since Columbus's time, um, the technology used to sail is totally different. Um, can any treasure? Um, here's a quadrant, an hourglass. This right here, is, um, here, right here is a beautiful stamp I found when I was doing some research. It actually shows you a, a nice little stamp they use to um, co commemorate Columbus's voyage of discovery in the Bahamas. It actually shows you some instruments he used an hourglass, a compass, and right here I show you a map that he possibly would have used during his journey of discovery, okay? Here is another map, uh, I'm sorry, another stamp that I found showing us um, the um, astrobo right here, and showing also an hourglass, okay? A uh, 15 cent stamp. Okay, that's the, now, now, now let's talk about Columbus's voyage of discovery, okay? Um, after three months of preparation, Columbus set sail on August 3rd, 1492, Columbus went on his voyage of discovery. Columbus had um, three ships. Um, he sailed from Padlos and Spain. And he, the three ships were the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. Columbus was um, the one that was um, the captain of the Santa Maria. That was his flagship. And the Pinta and the Nina were, um, were captained by the Pinzon brothers, OK? And we'll talk later on about the Pinzon brothers and exactly the role that they would have played in Columbus' voyage of discovery, OK? Um, so these, right, these three pictures are showing a um, replica of how, um, how most persons believe these ships actually looked, okay? So today, let's talk about the problems that Columbus encountered on his voyage of discovery. Columbus' voyage of discovery was not smooth sailing. Before he left and during his voyage of discovery, he encountered several different challenges. And so we'll talk about the various challenges that Columbus faced, okay? Um, First of all, um, it was difficult for Columbus to find men because they were afraid that they would wonder, um, that, 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 sorry, they were afraid that, that they wouldn't return. And they heard rumors of gigantic whirlpools and sea monsters that would swallow the ships, okay? And so they also feared they would fall off the face of the, or, or they, they would fall off the edge of the earth. Remember we said most persons believe the earth was flat. And so if they ventured off too far, they would fall off the face of the earth, okay? Um, to solve this problem, Prisoners were willing to work on his ships along with some others who set sail. So Columbus left um, Spain with, uh, well, with about 90 men, okay? Also, he brought along with him um, some carpenters 
um, to help them repair the ship such as the pins on brothers, okay? And uh, the pins on brothers are very important. Um, typically, when we talk about Columbus and his voyage of discovery, we usually um, say that Columbus came and Columbus um, had a bunch of prisoners with him. No, that's not the case. Along with prisoners, Columbus had some skilled men that actually worked with him and went along with him on his one. Another problem he encountered was the fact that um, um, the rudder broke on the pinto. And so to solve this problem, they stopped off at the Canary Islands where they were delayed for three weeks to get the rudder fixed, okay? So they stopped at the Canary Islands, they fixed the rudder and they went on their way, okay? Um, another problem um, they faced was the sail on the, uh, on the, the sail on the Nina had to be changed, okay? And so to solve this, um, they change it from a Latin, uh, from Latin to a square ring, okay? So that's what they did, okay? Um, another problem they faced was they didn't have enough place for sleeping. And um, we said Columbus took a crew of 90 persons along with him. Um, only Columbus and the other ship captains had cabins and bunks to sleep in, which made life for the other crew members very rough, okay? To solve this problem, all the sailors slept anywhere they could find on the ship, and they cooked on deck on a bed of sand, okay? So their sleeping quarters weren't um, the best, but again, because they were already on this voyage of discovery with Columbus, they decided to make the best out of this, okay? Another problem they encountered was the fact that men were afraid, and they constantly wanted to turn back. And so um, the winds always blew east and towards the west, and they were afraid that when they decided to go back home to Spain, the winds would, st would still be blowing them, um, will, will be blowing them away, okay? So as they were journeying with Columbus, um, they became very, 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 um, very fearful that they would eventually lose their lives and they couldn't find their way, their way back home after um, arriving to the east where they were trying to go, okay? To solve this, um, Columbus encouraged them by offering them a reward to the first man who saw land, um, okay? And on September, and, and also in order to sort of kind of ease their affairs on the 9th of September, Columbus began keeping two logs, one with the true distance and the false one, which showed fewer miles for the crew. Um, another chance they encountered was the fact that the compass stopped pointing north and this made the crew very, very afraid, okay? To solve this, Columbus again was able to, to, to encourage the sailors, okay? Um, another problem they encountered was the fact that they had difficulty finding land, which made the crew want to commute um, to commit mutiny. Um, Columbus avoided this by convincing the men that land was near and promised that if land was not sighted in three days, he would turn back to go to Spain. Okay. So Columbus was a very he, he, he was a strategist. Every time they encountered a problem, Columbus found some way to help them to alleviate their um, fear. Okay. talk about Columbus making landfall, okay? So, um, Rodrigo de Triana on board the Pinta was the first man to spot land on October 12, 1492. Um, or, uh, he spotted it in Salvador, but he actually thought it was actually Asia, okay? Because um, remember now, to before, this, before this time, um, they did, I mean, people from um, the Eastern portion of the world did not know that um, the Western world actually existed, okay? Um, Christopher Columbus thought that he made it to the Spice Islands and fell on his knees, weeping and thanking God. He planted a cross in the ground and took possession of the island on behalf of um, the majesty of the king and queen of Spain. If any of you visit San Salvador today, there's a beautiful, beautiful stretch of beach where it is believed that Columbus was landed. And they actually have the uh, nice little monument with the cross there. It's, it's, it's nice, beautiful, and uh, picturesque, okay? Um, he was greeted by friendly Lucayans who brought food and water and worshiped them. Um, Columbus called them Indians, of course, because he thought that he uh, arrived at his destination, okay? Um, uh, an inspection of the island revealed there was no spice, there was no gold, and other things Columbus was looking for, okay? Um, Columbus also found on his journey, he found Rumki, Long Island, Crooked Island, Ragged Island. He also visited Cuba and Hispaniola during his voyage, during his voyage, voyage of discovery, okay? So, when we look at um, Columbus' first voyage um, overall, we see that Columbus did not achieve his goal. Uh, we would have said during our previous sessions that Columbus was interested in looking for um, he um, for GS. He wanted to um, find gold. He wanted to find spices, and he was unable to find any of them in large quantities during his first 
voyage of discovery, okay? So therefore, it was not as successful as Columbus had hoped it would have been, okay? It was successful because when we look later on, you'll actually see that um, Columbus' voyage of discovery, again, um, would have opened up um, a whole new world. However, that was something Columbus found by accident, okay? Here is a nice beautiful picture showing us exactly a replica of what persons assumed would have um, um, taken place when Columbus first arrived. This man holding the, the flag is believed to be Columbus and some men that went along with him, okay? As you can see, he's taking soldiers along with him. Why did you leave Columbus took of some protection with him, okay? Good, he didn't know exactly what he was getting into. Okay, let's move on. Um, so here is um, a map showing us um, exactly what, um, um, where persons, I mean, persons actually believe Columbus voyage, um, how it actually went. He went in this direction, stopped the Canary Island way. He went this way. He found San Salvador. He traveled through the, a few islands of the Bahamas. He went to Cuba and he came back to Spain, okay? Okay, good. So let's move on. So Columbus, so that journey lasted. Um, um, and Columbus went back. He took some Indians with him. Um, and therefore, he was made governor. And, you know, he was celebrated for his achievement, okay? Now, Columbus made a second voyage. Um, Columbus took on a second voyage in 1493. And he visited um, the, um, Dominica, Guadalupe, Nevis, San, I mean, Santa Cruz, the Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, Cuba, and Jamaica. Again, these are all new territories that Columbus would have um, discovered on his second voyage of discovery, okay? He went back um, a second time in, in 1493 and he found more islands, okay? Um, he used 17 ships during his um, second voyage of discovery. Um, and he took supplies to try to colonize the Bahamas, okay? Uh, when he arrived in Hispaniola, he discovered that um, the men he left were killed and they also mistreated the Indians that he left there, okay? Christopher Columbus also encountered a hurricane and he was stuck for several days during his second voyage of discovery. The king and queen of Spain heard of the mistreatment of the native people, but they continued to support Columbus despite their anger, okay? Let me show you a map of his second voyage. Again, here is a map showing us a second voyage of discovery. Again, you go back, okay? So these are some of the places Columbus would have found during his second voyage of discovery, Puerto Rico, Virgin Islands, Guadalupe, Dominica, all these beautiful places, okay? Now let's talk about Columbus' third voyage of discovery, okay? So after the second, he went back again the third time, okay? He took a third voyage in 1498 and visited Trinidad, Venezuela, and Hispaniola again. I mean, he was six ships during his third voyage. Um, he, mis um, he mistook South America for an island, but he landed on Venezuela, where he saw a large amount of fresh water um, running from a river, okay? Um, when Columbus went to Hispaniola, he was arrested and sent back to Spain in chains. He was later freed by the king and queen of Spain. Um, the reason why Columbus was arrested during his third voyage of discovery was because he was accused of mismanagement of the colony, okay? And so therefore, he was arrested and he was sent back to Spain in chains, but he was later freed um, after the king and queen, um, the king, king and queen of Spain found out about that Columbus was um, in prison, okay? Let's talk about his final voyage of discovery, which, was, which would have been his fourth one. Now, his final voyage of discovery was in 1502 and 1503, and he visited Martinique, Hispaniola again, Jamaica again, Honduras, Costa Rica, Cuba, and Panama, okay? Um, he continued to discover the Indian Ocean, he encountered a hurricane again while in Santo Domingo trying to replace the ship. Um, he found large quantities of gold in Panama where he attempted to um, settle. But um, he got lots of resistance from the locals who found, uh, uh, sorry, who, who fought off the intruders. So that never happened. Um, ships were leaking because they were eaten by worms and eventually Columbus and his men marooned in Jamaica. Columbus and his men were able to send for help from Hispaniola and eventually charged a small ship and returned back to Spain, okay? So the fourth voyage was Columbus' last voyage of discovery. Again, if we look overall at all of Columbus's voyages, okay? Um, can we say that his voyages were successful? 
Can we see any success in any of his voyages? Now, here is a picture showing us his voyages again. Um, again, if you, follow, if you follow the arrows, I will actually show you exactly the route he took. Came back around and he went back home. Now, here is a chart showing you, comparing basically Columbus's voyages of discovery, showing you the dates he went, um, the places he went, successes and challenges he faced um, throughout all of his voyages. If you look on the chart, you will actually see that Columbus had some success and he had some challenges for all of his voyages. What is common in all of Columbus's voyages of discovery was the fact that every time Columbus went on a new voyage of discovery, he was able to find land, okay? He encountered a hurricane two times during his voyage of discovery. Um, so we can assume that Columbus went during hurricane season in, um, in the New World. Well, so we see Columbus encountered hurricanes. Um, he was attacked by the natives who were there. He found a little gold during his first time. And also during his last time, he found a little bit of gold, okay? So we can see some similarities there, okay? Um, so now let's look, at, let's look at a summary of Columbus' achievements. Um, firstly, Columbus never made it to India and Spice Islands like he originally wanted to. Um, so therefore, um, he could not get the gold. He could not get the spices that he wanted. Um, he wanted to get from those places. Um, he was also unable to find large quantities of gold, spices, and other things he was searching for. And so therefore, again, we see he didn't achieve his, his goal. Um, he found large quantities of gold in Panama. So again, he, he found some gold. He was able to find and claim new land in the name of Spain. So again, the Spanish territory was able to be um, was able to expand. Okay, so they had more land, and there's a saying: more land means you have more power. Okay, and because Columbus found a whole new world, a whole two continents of of, of places. Okay, Spain was able to um, eventually go into those places and eventually colonize areas um, in those regions. Okay. Um, we started a new trade route because, like we said, um, this trade route never existed before because no one ever ventured as far west as Columbus went. And the reason why they didn't, they didn't um, venture off west because of the whole myth that if you ventured so far west, you would eventually fall from the face of the earth because most persons believe that the earth was... Um, um, he, was un he, was, he was unable to establish proper settlement in a new world, hence, it resulted in the genocide of the Indians. Now, even though Columbus tried to establish settlement, he tried to um, um, put some Spanish settlement, initially it was not successful. And the reason why it wasn't successful was because he had lots of resistance from the native Indians who were there. So you would have your Lucayans, your um, Chinos, your Kalanagos, or whom you would know as the Caribs. Again, they fought um, against Columbus. And it, they didn't allow Columbus to just come into their territory and to establish settlement. So it was very difficult for Columbus to actually establish any degree of settlement in the name of Spain. They tried to, but again, initially when they first started, it was not successful because the native people, they would have resisted and they fought against Columbus and his men, okay? Um, Columbus helped to spread Christianity. Hi, welcome to grade two math with Mrs. Farrington. And today we're going to be looking at again, graphs. And when we do graphs, when we're looking at graphs, there are some words that you're going to hear. We talk about data and graphs is about putting data in a way that's easy to understand, whether it be a pictograph, which means we use pictures, or a bar graph. And data simply means information. Information. How do we get this data? We collect the data, which means we have to gather the data or the information. And we can use this information or data to predict certain things. So today we're going to be gathering some data and the way we're going to first get this data is we're going to do a tally chart. So our first scenario is the Johnson family was taking orders for their first takeout meal 
after the 24 hour lockdown. So Rochino decided to graph the results. But before he could graph the results and make a graph, Rochino had to first tally and find out the, what everybody wanted. So they've taken these orders. They go into Bamboo Shack. And the orders were cracked chicken, cracked conch. Then some people wanted a breast snack. Some people wanted a thigh snack. Fry dry, no hot sauce. And then there were some people, they all about wings. So they wanted a wing snack. So these were the options. <clears throat> now, when everybody started to order, Rochino started to write. So so for cracked chicken, six people want it. So what we do, we don't write the number six. We're going to do a tally chart and tallies at these marks. You've seen them before. So if one, two, three, four, five, shut the door. So that's five. And then we said it's six persons who wanted cracked chicken. So five plus one is six. Now crack conk. 11 people wanted crack conch, so now we have to do tallies for 11. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, shut the door. That's 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, shut the door. 5, 10. So how many more do we need for 11? Can we draw 5? You're correct. No, we don't need the whole 5 because 10 plus 1 is 11. Then breast snack, only two people wanted breast snack. And then six people wanted thigh snack. So we already remember six from the crack chicken. One, two, three, four, five, shut the door. Plus one is six. And wings, one, two, three, four, five, shut the door. So this is the order for bamboo shark for the Johnson's family. So we have this. Now we said that Rochino, he did a graph. He graphed this. So here's what the graph looks like. So we go from tally chart to the graph. So we see here that this information has been taken and put in a graph. And use looking at it like this, we can tell some things. So we have our tally chart there. And when we look at our graph, we can check it. We have the cracked chicken, six persons, cracked conch, 11, breast snack, two breast snack, thigh snack, six thigh snacks, wing snack, six wing snacks. So we have our data or our information. So based on this, we can answer some questions. We can use this, our graph, to answer some questions about this order. Okay, so we already said that the Johnson family was taking orders for their first takeout meal after the 24 hour lockdown. And Rochino graphed the results. Use the graph to answer the questions. So we're going to use this graph here to answer some questions. Okay, so question number one, and we use our reading finger, how many people ordered a cracked conch snack? So that's the exact one. We just want to know how many people ordered what? Cracked conch. How many? So we go and we look at our graph and we look for cracked conch. And then we slide our finger up and cracked conch stops at 11. So that one is straightforward. So we would write 11 people. Number two, which two meals did the same number of people order? Hmm. So now we know that we're looking for two meals and 
the same number of people. So, crack chicken is six. And crack count is 11. So, those two aren't the same. Breast snack is two. So, it's not the same as any of those. Thigh snack is six. It's not the same as breast. It's not the same as crack count. Ah, but it's the same as crack chicken. So, crack chicken and thigh snack both were ordered by six people. So then I would write cracked chicken and thigh snack. Bam. So six people ordered both of those. Okay. Now, number three. How many people ordered either a breast snack or a thigh snack? How many people ordered either a breast snack? I look at the breast or thigh. They order either a breast or thigh. So that means I have to put these together. I'm combining them. So... Two people ordered a breast. I'm going to make two breasts. And six people wanted thigh. Okay, so then one know who ordered which. Both of those, two plus six. Good. Six, seven, eight. I use my counting on method. Two plus six equals eight. So eight people ordered either a thigh snack or a breast snack. Number four, if three more people ordered a wing snack, how many wing snack orders would there be? Okay, I'm going to read that another time because I want to understand what it's asking me. If three more, three more, which means these are not included on this. Three more people ordered a wing snack. How many wing snack orders would there be? So wing snack as it is, is five. There are five wing snack. But if three more means I need to add three. How many wing snack orders would there be? So five plus three equals what would be my sum if I added three more to the five. 5 plus 3 equals 8. So my answer is 8 orders. Sometimes we have to read the problem more than once so that we can understand it. Number 6. If two less people ordered crack conch, how many cracked conch orders would there be? So this is almost like Number four, and did you notice that there's a whole big mistake on this? How did we miss something? We went from one, two, three, four to six to seven. So now I have to fix this. Five, six. Woo. Good looking out. Thank you, smart student who was paying attention. So this one says two less ordered what crack conk hmm let me read that again if two less people ordered crack conk how many cracked conk orders would there be so i'm gonna look at crack conk and i know that 11 people ordered crack conk but it said two less so it's not like I'm adding two to it. So if it's less, that means I am subtracting. So 11 minus 2. And what is 11 minus 2? Just in case, we got to draw triangles. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 9, 10, 11. So we have 11. Crack conk. And it has to be two less. 
So now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So if 2 less ordered, it is 9. Well, let me be 9, crack count. Okay. Moving on. We have number 6. So now we're going to, it says, list the meals in order from least to greatest. Okay, so I'm, if I'm going to list the meals, that means I have to write all of them in order from least to greatest. But least to greatest, what does it mean? Well, least is the smallest to the largest. So we have least in the smallest number of orders to the greatest. So we look here and we know that we only ordered... The Johnson's only ordered two breast snacks, so breast snack would be first, because that's the smallest order. Mm -hmm. And then, anybody has three? No, about four, five. Wing snack. Okay, cross that. That was five and six. We have crack chicken and thigh snack. Crack chicken, comma, and thigh snack. Okay, and then the last thing is cracked conk because we had the most orders for that. So there we go. We just completed answering questions based on the data that we have in a graph. So now we're going to do another one and we should be able to get through this one quickly. So for this particular one now, this is not about food. Rochino's mother, Rochino went to Super Value to purchase some supplies and he graphed what she brought. So we're going to use that graph to answer some questions. But before we get to the graph, let's look at our data. She bought sanitizer. She bought Lysol, she bought bleach, she bought soap, and she bought wipes, disinfecting wipes. So what do you think? Well, I think we already said it. She went to get supplies. What kind of supplies do you think she went to get based on these items. Supplies for what? You're right. She went to get supplies for COVID-19 because you need sanitize, you need your Lysol, bleach, soap and wipes. So here's what, what she got. One, two, three, four, five. Shut the door. How many? Five, six, seven, eight. Eight sanitizers. One, two, three, four cans of Lysol. One, two, three. Three gallons of bleach. She must have bought the case. I mean, she buy Clorox. And then, one, two, three, four, five, shut the door. One, two, three, four, five, shut the door. Five, ten, eleven, twelve. She bought twelve bars of soap. So that means she bought the whole pack. The whole pack. She went into the club pack section. And then she bought two jars of wipes. So that's what Rochina bought from Super Value. And Rochino tallied. And then Rochino created a graph. He used the information from the tally into the graph. So 
Now, we have questions about this. So we have it in a graph form so we can easily see the data or the information. Because keep in mind, when we do a tally, it's not cut and dry like this. Normally, when you do a tally, it's not in order. And you would add everything at the end. But a tally helps you to keep things in their correct grouping. And so now we have a graph and we're going to use that graph to answer some questions. So how many bottles of hand sanitizer did Rochina purchase? When we look at our graph, we look at hand sanitizer, eight bottles, straightforward. Easy point. Which item did she purchase the least of? Mm. Least, so we should look for the for the line that is the shortest. Lysol is four, bleach is three, two wipes. So which item? Wipes. She purchased the least amount of wipes. Okay. How much Lysol and bleach did she purchase? Lysol and bleach, which means I am combining or putting them together. Okay, so I have Lysol, four Lysol, plus three bleach, four plus three, four, and three, four, five, six, seven. So, seven, seven Lysol and bleach, seven items. How much more soap did she purchase than sanitizer? What? Okay, so I know it has something to do with soap and sanitizer. How much more soap did she purchase? Oh, so I look here. It's obvious that there's more soap than sanitizer. So how would I know the difference? Ah, we would have learned that difference, when we hear the term difference, we are subtracting. So soap, she got 12 bars of soap. And the difference, I'm going to subtract, is 8. So 12 minus 8. 12 minus 8 will give us 4. And if I wanted to check that, this is 12. This is where the soap purchase ends. See that? Right? And I can count up. So I'm going to count up. Hmm. So this is 8. And I'm going to count up 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's a difference of four between the sanitizer and the soap. So we are correct. Four more soap than sanitizer. And this type of subtraction is comparison. Comparison, when we want to know the difference between two items, we are comparing them to see. So between them, there's a four soap difference between the sanitizer and the soap. Now, you see what Miss Farrington did? Thank you very much again. I know you couldn't wait to tell me that, Miss Farrington. These numbers wrong down here. Good, we fixed it. So, if Rochina doubled the amount of bleach she purchased, how much would that be? We're going to read that again. If Rochina doubled... That's one of those math words, double. The amount of bleach she purchased, how much would that be? Okay, so we know we're talking about bleach. And we know that she purchased three gallons of bleach. So what, what does doubled mean? Double. Very good. Double means two times two. So do it twice. I think you play double Dutch. You play skipping rope with one rope. 
But when you play double dutch, which is another form of jump rope, you use two. So double means two. So, but does that mean I'm going to add two? No. Double means I have three twice. Double this. So three plus three, remember from our doubles, equals six. So if she doubled it, it would be six gallons of bleach if she doubled her order or her purchase. And finally, it asked, what was the total number of items that she purchased? Let's read again just to make sure. What was the total number of items that she purchased? I'm going to circle this word here, total. We know that when we see total, that means we're adding. So they're asking for the total number of items, which means now total means all. We're going to put all together. So we have eight sanitizer plus four Lysol plus three bleach plus 12 soap plus two wipes. And notice when I wrote my 12, I made sure that 12, one, 10, two ones, that it's in the correct place and everything is lining up. So now I make sure I put my addition sign. Now I have an addition number sentence. I have one, two, three, four, five, add ends. Okay. So I have to add all of these. Oh my goodness. Yes, we're going to do. We have 12 plus two. We can add these two together. Add these so we can cut down. So we have 12 plus two. It's 14 and then four plus three. Very good. Four plus three equals seven. And then we have this eight. So eight plus seven plus 14. Okay. Perhaps we can break this down even some more. So eight plus seven. Good. So eight plus seven will give us 15. And then we have that 14. So see, we broke that right down. So 15 plus 14, five plus four, five ones plus four ones equals nine ones. Then add the digits in the tens column, one ten plus one ten equals two tens. So 29. She purchased 29 items. Excellent. You did very, very well. You see how we took our time. We read the problems. We looked at the graph. We looked at the data, the information, and we used that information to answer questions. And that is what we do with graphs. So thank you so much for paying attention and please practice using the worksheets and the activities that have been provided for you. This has been grade two math with Mrs. Farrington. Remember to stay indoors, stay safe so that we can bend the curve. See you next time.